Hi, welcome to the first zone. Now, uh, in our stall, uh, uh, we are displaying some uh, first related uh, exhibits. Now, once you go through all these exhibits, you can get an overall idea about uh, the, the development model involved in uh, free and open source software and uh, the alternatives, things like uh, the alternatives that you can use uh, instead of uh, the proprietary uh, counterparts and also uh, the legal stuff involved in uh, free and open source software and in addition to that the, uh, the tools that are used in networking stuff and uh, in addition to that uh, if you are interested enough you can you can have you stand the chance to win uh, stickers that has free and open source uh, logos and uh, and things like inter that, uh, those interesting stuff and even uh, you can um, you, you get the opportunity to have uh, installation CDs of uh, Ubuntu versions basically uh, this is a uh, web, uh, web based voice conferencing application right uh, then uh, it is uh, the uh, task wise it is similar to skype and uh, google talk but uh, here this is completely uh, web based and uh, you don't have to uh, install uh, anything to uh, may, uh, use this software you can just load the website and uh, start your conversation uh, again uh, then it's similar to google in that side but uh, here uh, this uh, application is done by uh, me and uh, I have source code so uh, if someone need uh, I can uh, integrate this into his website uh, then uh, the technology uh, goes here uh, first uh, I uh, hosted this website in Ap uh, Apache web server then client machines uh, send a request to the web server then uh, web server uh, give this interface to you then uh, you can uh, connect with the uh, media server using this uh, interface. Uh, here you have to type your name uh, and uh, you can type your name and uh, press enter. Then uh, you connect with the uh, media server. Uh, this is flash media server. Uh, then uh, uh, all the conversation going uh, with this media server. Uh, that much simple. Then you have a persistent uh, connection and conversation going on. Local RCA means uh, product translation according to the culture and adaption of specific country, region, group to introduce product different market segments. And it is basically adaptation of graphics, adaptation of local currencies, use appropriate name format and phone numbers like that. And we all know that there are cartoons like um, Stone Age and now those are localized into Sinhalese as Didi Prato in this country and went through uh, went to many uh, Sri Lankans. Likewise, we want to um, yeah, open source products, we want to distribute it among many people. So, the Firefox, you can see that in this version. Now, there is also a single version as well and Google also, you can use it in your language. Likewise, there are so many uh, open source products we can use in Singhala. Uh, open Office also now it is in, also in Singhala. And uh, for the mature people, you can contribute to translate uh, Open Office as well. Now the product in Singhala, but we need uh, more contribution to translate the help page into Singhala. And uh, this is Poodle. And there is another thing called Launchpad that is used to. Uh, so uh, uh, version controlling tools are used to manage those uh, manage those changes uh, the first version controlling tool was the source code uh, control system it, it had only the ability to uh, uh, take the uh, trace the changes of a file uh, but now with cvs jit and uh, svn there are more functionalities like uh, branching tagging and uh, so many th merging and so many things with those uh, with those capabilities of these uh, tools uh, developers uh, if there are team of developers developing a product they can use these uh, tools to uh, manage the, manage the changes of their source code. That's right. Uh, yeah.
and uh, what is happening in network monitoring is uh, it sees into uh, what is happening inside the network, how data packets are being traversed and uh, what are being what are the failures or some uh, let's say some kind of unethical things happening we can just monitor them and identify here we are showing a very simple application called Wireshark where uh, it, it is uh, shown each and every packet which are being captured here and uh, we can drill down into those packets and see what's inside the information there and uh, information such as from where it goes to where and the protocols being used and such information and using such tools we can uh, get the idea of uh, when administrating the network we can get use of this uh, open source software tools to identify the problems in the network. Be an open source software and low. Say uh, you create a, an open source software and the people who use uh, the software create another software, software using your code and close the source of the software. So you should uh, need to go to code if needed. And you should have a legal right to that code. Software license are for that. So, uh, say the GPL, GNU public license, general public license. If you release the code on the GPL, you are saying that the code released my code, if you are going to use my code, you should release it under GPL as well. So it will be free as well. So people can't close the source of software you create. And this license is for software that you say, I don't care what people do with my software. Uh, you can make closed source software, sell them and do anything you like with that software. This is the license for that. Dual licensing schemes are for things that you really say. For some licenses, for some code, you say. For educational purposes, it is free to use. You can see the code. But if you are using it for commercial purposes, you have to pay. That is kind of licenses uh, mentioned under dual licensing scheme. GPL to compatible license are lot of licenses that is uh, agreeing to the GPL. That, that means the code released under this license also be released under a free license. Basically the GPL. And this is about digital rights management. That is about say you buy an music for your iTunes. Uh, from iTunes for your iPod and apps for your iPad and uh, books from the Kindle. What is said by the digital rights management is you should only use the product you bought in that device only. You can't use it in any other media player or any other book player. But what is the movement again digital rights management does is they say no to DRL. They say you, if, if an artist creates some music or video or some book you should have the uh, you should be able to use it in any uh, device you want if you paid for it that is the that is about the uh, movement against digital rights management